Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader Colonies Guide. Plenty of you ask me what are the upgrades, in what order to go for, what to do for colony traits, how to get the biggest benefits out of all five colonies, Falstone, Janus, Dargonus, Kiava, Gamma and Wibos 6. What I'll show you in this video is every upgrade in a specific order, with every choice during the events for colony traits and then I'll explain in brief detail what everything gives. Let's not waste time, let's go. Are you ready for more humor for the KO trader? As I am. The Emperor protects. So the very first thing that we're gonna do is that I'll hover everything up on every single colony so you can check how all of those upgrades go in order. This is the specific order that you should follow for every single colony for the biggest benefits. Okay, so pause where you want to and I'll go through each one. Janus now. Janus is the second colony that you'll get after the Falstone. Then Dargonus, your home world, the third colony that you'll get in a row. Then Kiava Gamma. All of that you will get in Act 2, of course, including Weibo 6. And now Weibo 6. The last colony. After we're done with all of this, now it's time to show the colony traits and the options, or better to say choices and consequences, every consequence that I picked during my run. So after you finish a project comes a trait, where you need to pick something, so trait 1 from the first, trait 2nd 1 from the second upgrade, third trait from the third upgrade, and so on. So. Again, I'm hovering over everything, and you'll see each trait that I picked for all of these upgrades. Janus. Again, pause where you want to. Dragonus. Kiava. Now 
and the last colony, we boss six. As well as Fallstone goes, now we're gonna check all colony projects in a bit better detail. You got two good options. The first one would be for St. Drusus, where you get Infernical item. If you don't plan to play with a Flamer, then you're gonna opt in for the Celestial Protector. Now, as far as rank 2 goes, the two most important ones would be Thousand Face Relic and Good Tidings, with the biggest benefits. Of course, they're quite expensive. Before you reach those, you can upgrade this four. These are flat benefits only and nothing else. But these two, Thousand Face Relic and Good Tidings on Falstone, are extremely good. That's, of course, when you play as Imperialis, Dogmatic, or Benevolentia, or better to say, Iconoclast run. For a heretical run, they're not that good. Now, uh, as far as rank 3 goes on Falstone, all three are good. You can go with basically everything. I went with a Hammer of Epiphany because I wanted Abelard in my team. If you don't play with Abelard, there is no point of going with a Hammer of Epiphany, okay? So you can opt in for the Crusade or in Druze's uh, footsteps. What I would choose out of these two, if for any case you will opt in to play with my Charger build, you're gonna go with Druze's footsteps. If you want to hurt demons, then you will go with Crusade. The best one from rank 3 out of these 3 would be the Crusade. Now, as far as rank 4 goes and upgrades for Fallstone, the best one by far and the first that you should upgrade would be Lightbringers. It's absolute must. After that, it's going to be the Crucible with the Holy Man feature. And then you're gonna opt in and upgrade the others. False Wonders, Missionaries and Gracious Priests. So Lightbringers and Crucible are those to go for. Now, as far as Tier 5 goes, there is nothing better than Solomon Veer Armor, or better to say Holy Defenders. This is like the best freaking project that you can get. Does it mean that Sacred Comet and Reliquary are bad? No, but this is definitely the best one and the one that you should go for. This armor is just way too good to skip. Now we go to Janus, and the best one from rank 1 to take would be Ultra Inquisitors and nothing else. These two do not provide such a good benefits as Ultra Inquisitors do. Now, as far as rank 2 on Janus goes, the best one would be Capella Biologies. But Capella Biologies is very, very hard to get. If you can get Capella Biologies, you should go for it first. But I know the game very well and this is very hard to get, so you're gonna opt in for the Dark Sages at the end. After the Dark Sages, you will go with Rose of Zamarkand and then you're gonna take classic benefits from the Reaping, Secret of Winter Scales and a Cure for Slot. As far as rank 3 goes, the best one would be Forest Fortresses. Now, for those that have problems in the game, and if you find combat difficult, then the best one to opt in from rank 3 on Janus would be Mechanized Servants because of the Scorcher Stim, where you can reset your attack abilities with a Stim. Basically, you hit an enemy, you chug a Stim, and then you can hit them again. Again, only if you have problems in combat, if you find the game hard, you will go for the Mechanized Servants. I went with the Forest Fortresses. Now, as far as Tier 4 goes on Janus, both Lust and the Great Fire are absolutely crazy good, especially the Lust, but the Lust is very hard to get. You need to put all of your points into the Fellowship of the Void, okay, and this is very, very hard to do. So that's why I went with the Great Fire, to save some time for the upgrades, but if you can and if you opt in to go with a Fellowship of the Void during your run, then of course the Defang of Perdition is great, especially because it rhymes with a Solomon Veer armor, because of course. After you're done with this two, you can opt in and finish the rest of the upgrades into Tier 4. Now, as far as the final upgrade goes on Janus, Tier 5, there is nothing better than the Pleasure World, because you're gonna get Watcher from above, which merges extremely well with all builds, it provides 25% bonus to dodge, and to parry, absolutely crazy good sword. Okay, good is also the Forbidden Planet, because you get dodge against Xenos, and you're gonna fight a lot of Xenos 
in this game, okay, a lot of aliens, and the useless one would be the shelter. I recommend Pleasure World, it's not a mistake if you wanna go with Forbidden Planet, but this is my recommendation, it's absolutely crazy good. The sword is just very unique. Now let's go to Dargonus, our home world. So, out of all of these upgrades in rank 1, Restoration, Extasiums and Emporium, Extasiums just provides the best freaking bonus that you can get. It's plus 5 to all skills. So, nothing to think about, this is the one you want to go for as the very first upgrade. As far as tier 2 goes, this is your imperative and the most important upgrade early on in a game. You just want to rush and max out this upgrade as soon as possible before any other upgrade on any other planet. It's the shield of the Emperor. Why is it important? You get Imperial Navy points so you can buy upgrades for your ship so you can win spaceship battles, okay? And you get an escort ship during combat. This is the most important thing to advance in a game and to have easier time during exploration of Coronus Expanse. It's a must. I repeat again, this is the most important colony upgrade in the game. After we're done with the Shield of the Emperor, we can go for Kazbalikan mission, upgrade this one as well, get the Ashen Breath, and then we can opt in and do all of this three, Decree, Genetic, and Doctrine. Zaylat, or better to say Sordid Goods, is not that good on Tier 2, and Built of the Expanse, again, I must say it's not that good, because here you're gonna get an option to buy a lot of gear, while here you won't get that option for a ship, you're opting in for the Shield of the Emperor. Now, as far as tier 3 goes, same applies as I said for tier 2. There is Imperial Navy here, it's a must. If you're gonna play on easier difficulties, then it's not a must and you can opt in for the Seasons of War and get a passive bloody underhive leader from the Seasons of Wars. That's the best one in combat, but as far as ship battle goes, this is the one that you want and this is why I went for it. Because I was playing on the hardest difficulty and it was a must. So this is the best upgrade in tier 3 on Dargonus. Tier 4 upgrades, the most important one is Militia Navy. Again, Imperial Navy, the bigger the reputation points with Imperial Navy, the stronger your battleship is. Okay, everything's gonna be golden in time when you play with full upgrades. It's extremely important. So, on tier 4, after the Militia Navy, we can go in with Bastion for the Battle Mastery and then we can go for the Charter of Minimal Rights. After that, we go with Call to Arms, Praising the Muses and Holy Prophet and once tier 5 is unlocked, we're gonna go with Scola Progenium to get a Loyalist Garb or better to say, to get the best light armor in the game that fits on a lot of your companions as well as if you play a squishy main rogue trader. Now, is it worth going for the Society of Cartographers and Librarium? Frankly, it's not. Scola Progenium is absolutely the best, even though you're gonna get a lot of reputation points for both factions here, Imperial Navy. This is the one that you don't want right now, because you're gonna max out Imperial Navy by the point of Militia Navy. If you sell everything, okay, and you get these reputation points, then you don't need to go for 12k here. You can just opt in for Scola and get a Loyalist Guard. This would be the best upgrades in order for Dargonus. Now we're gonna switch to Kiava Gamma. Now, as far as Kiava Gamma goes, this is very specific. If you wanna play a damage dealing tanky psyker, you're gonna opt in for the Cursed Boots. If you wanna play with Pascal in your team, you're gonna opt in for the Dark Marquesa. That's if you play ranged Bounty Hunter Pascal. If you play as Assassin Pascal, then you're gonna opt in with the Hand of Xenocide. And that's the main difference of these upgrades. Your choice of what you wanna do. So, Assassin Pascal, Bounty Hunter Pascal, or Tanky Psyker Main Rogue Trader. Pick. Everything is valid. I picked Restoration because I was playing with Sanctic here. Now, as far as tier 2 goes, upgrades on Kiava Gamma, the most important one by far, and it should be done ASAP, like I said in Dargonus for the Shield of the Emperor. This is ASAP for Kiava Gamma, and the most important upgrade is the Giants, where you're gonna get mobile extractiums, 10 of them. So you can dig planets, get resources, and upgrade your colonies faster. This is the most important upgrade 
in the game number two. First one is the Shield of the Emperor, second one is Giants from Kiamagama. After we're done with that, you can opt in for the Flawless Servitors, for the Motive Forces Life and Instability Detonator upgrade, then we're gonna go with Compassion for the Silent, where we're gonna upgrade the Void Ship, and then you go in for flat upgrades with Mech Trains and Chapel of Enumeration. But remember, Giants is the way to go. Everything else can't even compare to the Giants. As far as rank 3 goes, I opted in for the Armored Rage because I wanted a big heavy lance weapon on my Void Ship. And by far, this is the best tier 3 upgrade on Ki Alagama. Should you go with Unwelcome Guests or Inferno? No, you should go with Armored Rage. Very simple. The only option that you have is Armored Rage on tier 3. These two are not worth it. Now we're gonna go to tier 4 upgrades on Kiava Gamma. The most important one would be Orbital Shipyard. Or better to say, we want Imperial Navy points. After that, the most important one would be a mechanical trade for the Repulsor Shield. Then you opt in for the Archive, and then you're gonna upgrade Sacred Flame and New Life. And you move on. Remember, this is the most important one on tier 4. Orbital Shipyard into a Mechanical Trade. For the tier 5 upgrades now, if you play as a Psyker, or if you play with Idira in your team, okay, so damage dealing Psykers, the most important upgrade, especially if you play as a Pyromancer for example, the most important upgrade would be the Warp Revelations because of Eternal Visor, which is gonna increase your Psyker abilities by a lot. You're gonna hurt way much more. If you don't care about Psykers on your run, then the best option would be the Sky Barrier. In 90% of cases, most people will opt in for the Sky Barrier as the final upgrade on Kiyama Gamma because the benefits are just freaking crazy good compared to others. But here, again, you become very OP with this helmet. As far as the power of Plasma goes, it's useless. Completely useless. Sky Barrier is the best. This is the best for specific builds. War Revelations. I recommend Sky Barrier. And the last one would be V-Boss Sticks and the last colony that you're gonna conquer. Now, truth to be told, you don't know which one is better, Punishment of the Tinkers or Punishment of the Outsiders. I believe that Punishment of the Outsiders is very, very good. But I opted in for the enemy knowledge here. I wouldn't be wrong if I went with Punishment of the Outsiders as well. Punishment of Calculation is garbage, okay? Flat garbage, so you should ignore. These two are the best, you can only pick one. What do I recommend? I recommend picking Outsiders, because I believe that critical damage is way too good to skip. Why I chose this one? Because it was a bit different when I played the game. This is after the patch guide. Now we go into tier 2 on Vibos 6. The most important upgrade, and there is no talking about it, would be Extractium Metallica. You want mobile Extractiums, okay? And now you're good to go. This is like ASAP, okay? And the most important thing that you can upgrade after the Shield of the Emperor and 10 Extractiums on Kiava Gamma. Now, the most important upgrade, number 3, would be Extractium Metallica from Vibos 6. This is the way to go. After Metallica, you're gonna go with Envirodome and you're gonna get, I will fear, no poison. Is it wrong, for example, to go with Ergonomics instead of Envirodome? No, it's not, because here also Absolute Efficiency is very good. Basically, you can opt in for both, take the one you like the, the most, okay? Or, better to say, if you have resources, go with ergonomics first, but I recommend going with Envirodo. After you're done with this two, you're gonna ignore the Holy Servitude and Lair in the Void, and you're gonna upgrade Warp Guides, Dreamless, and Lair in the Void. Now, after the patch, as far as tier 3 goes, I had to go for the test of wills because ship combat was really, really hard. Now, ship combat is a bit nerfed and it's not as hard as it used to be on Unfair. I had to go for the unearing shots. But I recommend Killing Fields as the upgrade that you want to take on rank 3 for Vibos 6. Because this is just way too good for to skip. Okay, I had to go with this. Do not follow this anymore. It's not valid. This is the upgrade that I would go for right now on my second run. 
Now the tier 4 upgrades, the most important upgrade that you wanna get immediately when available on rank 4 would be navy ships for imperial navy reputation and you're gonna get a very good sword for Abelard as well. After navy ships you're gonna go in a panel battalion where you're gonna get diligent cannoneers, then you're gonna get captive Xenos and then you're gonna upgrade this for additional resources and then the final tier 5 rank will open up. So what you upgrade here? I took palaces for the outcasts. Why? Very simple, I was playing Ascentic Psyker and I wanted intelligence, fellowship and willpower because I was an officer Ascentic Psyker and I was profiting out of every single stat that palaces for the outcasts provide. So if you play as an officer, if you play as a Psyker, then you're gonna opt in for the Master of the Shadowy Expanse. That was in my case, and it's the best upgrade for that type of build. If you play as a Warrior, then you're gonna opt in for Repentance of the Lost and grab the sword, Mastercrafted Power Claymore. And the worst one would be the Raider Base, because this is like for pistol builds, Pistolero builds and I would not recommend it to be honest, these still are the ones you want to opt in. Probably most of you will go for the easy 10 plus to intelligence, fellowship and willpower upgrade. That would be the full colony guide. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll be seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Emperor protects.